morning i am ready to go today is conference day got my makeup on my face is a little bit puffy for some reason but yeah i'm not actually presenting until like 5 30 today so i just have to go there early probably watch some of the presentations hang around wait until the afternoon or the evening practice a little bit more I'm back at Chase Center again. We're in the Mission Bay area of SF, which I think is really nice because it's like Sydney. Take my hand and hold it tight. Look at the paintings, I'll be your guide. I met David, a US APM, yes. who takes me around because I'm so lost. Yeah. We're going to wherever, wherever we're Yeah. Everyone the way. Yes. Which we don't know where that is. <laughs> don't stop looking in my eyes. Are you cold? Do you want to sit down? I've been here a million times, so I know my way around. Don't stop looking at buy something for Lucas, but I don't know anything about basketball. Does he like any of this stuff? I mean, I'll just get whatever looks good. I don't know. years is a pretty long time. As you can see, we have also changed a lot. Still haven't figured out where the colors have gone. <laughs> Teamwork directory to connect the dots across teams, their apps, and their work, wherever it happens. We are joined by today five-time NBA champion and the best point guard ever to play the game. Maybe I can't say that in the room, but I think so. Uh, Urban Magic Johnson, alongside one of the most electric players, uh, definitely headed to the Hall of Fame, two-time WNBA and Olympic champion, Candace Parker. Please come up. This is great, Mike, thanks. All right, so this is, uh, this is pretty nerve-wracking for me. This is easily my most nerve-wracking <laughs> set of the day. Yeah, first you've got to have a great coach, right? And it starts with, with them, and then it trickles down to uh, the talent on the floor. But everybody bought into the strategy. Everybody bought into team basketball. Everybody bought into the hard work, um, the commitment to each other. That's very important, that everybody commits to each other and they all have no hidden agendas. It's, it's one goal, one team. You know, we're all going to pull in the same direction. And I was blessed, man, I, I tell you. It was only one situation where uh, I thought we could never win, and that was all the way back in high school. It took the other pieces, guys that you don't know. People look at Candace and I and say, we're the best on our team, but it, it was the other players, the role players, really help you understand that you can win the championship. And I, I just want to go with the local team here. Uh, Clay, Steph, and Draymond gonna get all the love. But if you don't have them equal dollars and those type of guys playing those role players, you can't win a championship. And they play such an important part of winning. And to piggyback off of what Magic said, just in terms of here, like I feel like the culture, when you walk into a situation and you can feel it, like that intangible culture. And I feel like when you walk into a situation where you know that everybody has bought in and the team takes the personality of the leader and that's the coach and the best player on the team. So you look at Golden State and I literally call them Steph and the Stephettes. 
because you see Jordan Poole over there dancing. You see all of these guys mimicking what Steph does. And I also will say that when you go into a situation and there's no job too big or too small for anyone on the team. So you'll see the best player making sure get the towel, cleaning the floor. You'll see, you know, the, the, the player that maybe doesn't play that much jumping up or rebounding and not having any ego. So I think those are the intangible things. And then of course you gotta have ballers. Like you gotta have ballers to win. No question. But it's those things that I think really make the difference and really give that energy and that push to be successful. And don't forget about, what's the center for Golden State? Uh, Looney. Oh my gosh. Looney. 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 Wow. Looney, Looney, Looney. Looney and Wiggins won a championship game. Won one of those games. Yep, yep, yep. You remember when they both played great and they won that game? If they don't play great, as great as Steph played in that game, they still don't win that game. So remember the, the role players play just a major role, just as much as the three superstars. And we had great role players for, you know, between Brian Scott, Michael Cooper, Michael Thompson, Bob McAdoo, Kurt Rambis, AC Green. We had unbelievable role players to go along with the superstars. And that's what you're seeing here. That's what Candace, uh, last season, her Chicago team, and then she, when she was with my, our Sparks, unbelievable. We, uh, we'll see if Draymond likes being called a Stephette about it. <laughs> he, probably, he probably gives you credit for pioneering state state. We already there. know that's not going to happen. You uh, have a lot to say tomorrow. Oh man, he's yeah, my teammate at TNT, so this. now you just set me up. Uh, well, just magic, just flip through a different duck team, right? The Dream Team, one of the most amazing teams of all time, right? You played on a team full of superstars. The Dream Team was fairly successful. What was hard about that, though? Well, I think first, you know, you have to manage the egos. And Chuck Daly did a wonderful job, our coach, of doing that. And then he said one thing that was very important the first day of practice. You're not going to get the same amount of shots. You're not going to get the same minutes you used to playing. And you have to accept that right now. And everybody bought into that. And then the thing that changed everything for all of us was, Chuck Daly said, Michael Jordan, you're going to be the captain of the dream team. He said, nope, I don't deserve to be the captain. Larry and Magic should be the captain. That meant everybody definitely had to leave their ego at the door. If Michael Jordan can take a step back, everybody else has to take a step back. And that's what happened. And nobody cared about anything but winning. We played the game the right way. Uh, being the point guard on that team, I didn't know who to pass it to. Normally, I'm, I'm coming down, Mike, and I'm <laughs> shaking and baking. I'm shaking and baking. I got James Worthy to my right, a beautiful basketball player. Byron Scott would always fade to the corner. Kareem would just stay down court and say, hey, if y'all need me to come down to the sky hook, I'll run down the court. Kurt Rambis came in on black rim glasses. I couldn't throw it to Kurt until he came to a complete stop or he would travel every single time. <laughs> AC Green would just be running so fast, you know, AC's just fat. Now I got Michael Jordan to my right. <laughs> Larry Bird to my left. Barkley, Pippen, Malone, Ewing, Robinson, Drexler, Stockton. And we had this college dude. We said, you stay over there, Chris and Lake. The reason why I'm saying this is that that team was so great that it, you could throw it to any one of the guys and they were going to deliver. The life lesson is even when you're great, you still got to practice. There's room for improvement. And you come to work every single day. We came to that practice every single day playing hard. See, that's the life lesson. And also, every guy wanted to improve and get better. And so, it goes to this audience of superstars that you have here, that they can still improve, they can still get better. They still get excited about coming to work every single day and still performing because not only did we go to practice, then we also went to blow every team out and we accomplished just that. For those who don't know, it, was, it, it seemed like a tough run. A lot of slumps, a lot of tricky parts. 
but you pull out the season. Talk to me about that experience, because sometimes you're just winning all the time, it seems easy, sure it wasn't. Other times, the team's got to... I feel we were a six seed going into the championship run. You know, everybody had counted us out, but I think we believed that if we were healthy, we believed that like the difference between us and the top teams wasn't that great. The margin for error in games, it really comes down to making those plays. I mean, we think about Michael winning six championships. We remember him hitting the shot against Russell, right? Holding the follow through. But he made the play and stole the ball from Carl Malone on the possession before. Yeah. So it's like, what if he didn't make that defensive play? And I think that's the biggest thing is I remember there was a point in the game where, you know, the momentum had shifted and we had a tight huddle and I came down and I said, we need to change our vibe. And everybody was looking at me in the eyes and that huddle. nobody was down. And I was like, we're going to win this. Like, we're going to win this championship. I ran out of battery on my camera because I was recording the interview, but it was so good, so inspiring. And now we're just preparing for the talk, which is going to be at 5.30. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel and I'm a product manager on Atlas and it's my job to solve problems for customers like you like how we can stay better aligned with teams other than our own. Today, we're going to show you how to kiss status meetings goodbye by staying in sync, async. And it all starts with rethinking how do we communicate on the context and progress of work? Because in teamwork, silence isn't golden, it's deadly. So can I get a show of hands? Put your hand up if you've either hosted or attended a status meeting in the last couple of months. But why do we hate status meetings so much? Well, first of all, to be clear, we're not saying that there isn't value in spending synchronous time with your teams. There definitely is. It's some stupid version of the same thing. I think Jake is playing. My skin looks so bad. I'm home right now. What a big day. It's been such a long day. I presented, I'll try to put some clips in this video as well from the live stream, but it was a really fun time and I had a really good day. Tomorrow and the few next days, it's the weekend, I'm taking tomorrow off, so very excited. Yeah, I'll see you in the next one.